At the time of posting this video, the new cartoon Batman Cape Crusader is almost upon us. This is the first new Batman animated series since Beware the Batman almost a decade ago and is the first serialised show that Bruce Timm has led since the end of Justice League Unlimited almost 20 years ago. Couple that with the fact that it's also produced by DCAU alumnus and Brave and the Bold creator James Tucker, the Batman director Matt Reeves, and the head writer is Ed Brubaker, one half of my favourite currently active comic book creative team, and you can probably understand why I'm quite excited about the prospect of this show. I've put out a bunch of speculation videos based on what has been released about the show so far, and it seems like whenever I schedule a video, some new information drops. In fact, while writing this video, DC Comics dropped their San Diego Comic Con panel schedule, and buried in the middle of it was this announcement about a special screening of Cape Crusader at 2.45pm on Saturday, the 27th of July, with Matt Reeves and stars Hamish Linklater, Jamie Chung and Minnie Driver. Curious that there's no sign of Bruce Timm or James Tucker, but Matt Reeves is also presenting a panel on his Penguin show later that same day, so perhaps they opted to kill two birds with one stone. I am very jealous of anyone that gets to attend that screening, and I'm sure some delightful nuggets of information will come to light during the Q&A session. Speaking of things coming to light, I wanted to share some additional thoughts I've had about the show over the last couple of weeks. So the first thing that I forgot to explicitly mention in my Cape Crusader trailer video was the very significant change that the team has made to Two-Face. It's something subtle that I didn't immediately pick up on until I was editing the video, but it's the fact that Two-Face's disfigurement is now on the right side of his face. Traditionally, Harvey Dent's face has been disfigured on the left side and has represented his bad side. But this time, the left side of his face is pristine. This indicates that it's his unscarred side that is his bad side. When Two-Face's design leaked back in March, I assumed the leaker had flipped the image in an attempt to avoid the image being picked up by anti-copyright theft measures. But I was completely wrong. Bruce Timm described how they wanted to take a different approach with Harvey Dent in this show. Essentially, he's a corrupt district attorney doing favours for the mob, noting that he never felt empathy for others until half of his face was disfigured. So it's his disfigured side that brings out more positive parts of his personality. I think this is a positive change because Batman villains tend to be physically or mentally wounded, and indirectly suggesting that being mentally ill or disfigured makes you a baddie is a bit insensitive. There seems to be a running theme with Cape Crusader where they are very deliberately trying to do the opposite of what is expected of them, and I kind of get why. There's no point in doing exactly the same thing over and over again. It's better to explore new ideas. It's not like the show will somehow erase what came before it after all, so why not experiment? Back when it was first announced, many fans, myself included, expected Cape Crusader to be connected to Batman the Animated Series, complete with Kevin Conroy as Batman. Some thought it might be a prequel series, others that it was a continuation. However, Bruce Timm stated that it was never their intention. Sure, it has a lot in common with BTS thanks to the Bruce Timm art style, but it was always intended to be its own separate thing. He even went as far as saying that, while he would have liked to have had Kevin come in and play a role, he was never in the running to play Batman, because they wanted to make a total break from what had come before. And it sounds like they're applying this philosophy to everything they're doing in the show. So let's talk about some newer information that has come out since my last video. In a brief interview with Empire Magazine, yes, I bought it and was a little bit miffed to find out that it was barely half a page, Bruce Timm talked some more about Alfred. He stated that this version of Alfred is not the surrogate father to Bruce that he has been in pretty much all other Batman adaptations over the last 40 years. Instead, Batman weaponizes Alfred, using him as a tool in his war on crime. Now, quite what he means by that is unclear. Perhaps, given Alfred's age, he had experience fighting in World War I and uses that experience to train Batman? Perhaps Alfred acts as his mechanic and customised that version of the Batmobile. Alfred has traditionally acted as a surgeon of sorts, helping to treat Batman's physical wounds. I have to suspect that this will also be the case in the show. As for Batman himself, that same interview in Empire included a few nuggets of information. Bruce Wayne stopped being Bruce Wayne after his parents were murdered in front of him. It was the act of replaying that horrific incident over and over again in his mind as a child that led to the birth of Batman. That's not to suggest that Bruce Wayne started wearing a costume and fighting crime as an eight-year-old, quite the opposite, but that is the point, that he stopped being a normal human being and became something else. Young Bruce Wayne's response to his feelings of powerlessness was to live out a juvenile fantasy of being the absolute best at everything. Cold, unfeeling, fierce. No one would ever make him feel that same level of terror again. This ties in with what they've already revealed about Bruce Wayne, about how he's a facade for Batman, a tool that he can use in his war against crime. He's a child's impression of what a foppish adult might be like, something to deflect suspicion. None of these things are new ideas, 
but I have a feeling that Cape Crusader is going to turn it up to 11. One thing I neglected to mention in my trailer video is that Bruce Timm and James Tucker have confirmed that Cape Crusader will have a running narrative across the whole first season. Yes, each episode is self-contained and could be watched in isolation, but if you watch the entire show you'll see the narrative threads being pulled together from episode to episode. This makes me think that we'll see characters like Harvey Dent and possibly Selena Kyle multiple times across the first season before they adopt their alternate identities. I would like to talk about Clayface. So in the show he's described as Basil Carlo, a distinctive looking actor that was stuck playing B parts when he wanted to be more handsome. So he takes an experimental formula to change his face but it goes wrong, disfiguring him and he goes on a murderous campaign of revenge. In the trailer we see a man with a fist indentation in his face and he doesn't look anything like Clayface. I jumped to the conclusion that Clayface was able to change his form but upon further reflection what if this guy is in fact the person that gave Basil the formula? Perhaps Basil is a test subject that experienced terrible side effects and the formula was adjusted to remove the side effects. Basil's pain was treated as a necessary step in perfecting the formula. What if the scientist was working on the formula for himself and Basil was an unfortunate casualty on the person's path to becoming a shapeshifter? What if this person is pressed in pain? That then leads me to ask, what if there's more than one Clayface in this show? For those that aren't aware, in the comics there have been about half a dozen different Clayfaces. The BTAS Clayface was an amalgamation of the first three, something I talked about at length in my first video essay about 18 months ago, but I am intrigued at the possibility of there being separate, distinct Clayfaces. Some people have suggested that rather than being Clayface, the scientist could be Falseface, and that is possible too. An important point to make is that the comic book Falseface wore elaborate, realistic masks. The Falseface seen in Batman Beyond could alter his face with his hands. And let's not forget that Falseface was a substitute for Clayface in the Adam West starring TV show of the 1960s. Having Clayface potentially battling Falseface is intriguing. I don't think it's been done before, but I could be mistaken. And as is tradition, mere hours after I finished recording this video, DC dropped a brand new clip from Cape Crusader, so let's talk about that as well. The 25 second video shows Batman in the new Batmobile taking on armed gangsters. We see that Batman uses the Batmobile as a weapon, slamming into a group of Tommy gun wielding criminals. It's worth noting that all of the men wear a matching uniform black suits and hats, with a purple section on the hat and a purple bow tie. I had previously speculated that the man we saw in the first trailer was the man that may become the Joker one day. Mm, yeah, that could still be the case, but I'm starting to feel like they've been playing me. The trailer ends with a glimpse at a maskless Selina Kyle, but still wearing her Catwoman costume, sitting in a car. She may be involved in all of this somehow but it's not really clear. But most importantly, we get to hear Christina Ricci's Catwoman say, Nice car. The trailer also features some cool editing techniques with the screen broken up like comic book panels. I wonder if that's part of the show or just something they did for this trailer. Ang Lee's Hulk movie did something similar all those years ago, and I really enjoyed how it replicates the feeling of a comic book page. I think it would be cool if they maintain this style of editing throughout, but I can imagine that some people less familiar with comics may find it hard to know where to look. Okay, so that's where I'm really ending the video now. I mean, unless DC drops something else before this comes out, in which case I'm going to have to jump back in and add some more. But I think they're done until the San Diego Comic-Con panel. There's still absolutely loads we don't know about Cape Crusader. For instance, who's the mayor of Gotham? What's the deal with the at-this-time unseen villains like Nocturna and Gentleman Ghost? They're both potentially supernatural villains, so it's kind of interesting that they haven't been shown off yet. Maybe she really is a vampire and he really is a ghost and they want it to be a surprise. Frankly, I have no idea, but I'm looking forward to finding out when all 10 episodes drop on Thursday the 1st of August on Amazon Prime Video. Regarding future Cape Crusader videos, what I plan on doing is a less scripted, spoiler-free video about the series as a whole. Then I will put out brief spoiler-filled videos for each episode as and when they're ready. Only watch these videos if you've seen the episode in question or if you have no intentions of ever watching them. Going forward, I may also do separate video essays about Cape Crusader characters, but that's only if the show resonates with me. I have high hopes for Cape Crusader and look forward to talking more about the show in the coming weeks.